So this is an Uppsala 2018 paper. Um, Uppsala is a programming language conference. So this was written in programming language uh, um, style, but this is about distributed systems. And it's, uh, I think it's a very nice paper. Okay. Oh, what happened? Maybe I'll stop my video, but can you see my screen? Um, nope. We see like a, a gray thingy and, and, and your mouse cursor moving. That's what I see as, okay. Why are we having this? Your slides didn't compile properly? It did. Okay. Now you are able to see it? Hmm? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll continue. I hope nothing goes bad again. So this is um, this is this um, thing shows a framework extension over the P language. What's P language? P is a safe event-driven programming language. This came, I think, with Microsoft Research, and uh, uh, this was part of uh, this was Ankush Desai's thesis at. Uh, UC Berkeley, I think he worked at Microsoft and did the thesis. Now he works at AWS. Um, B is a language for writing um, event-driven programming where you model uh, distributed systems as state machines that communicate via message passing. It's really nice. I mean, this uh, took me into my first detour about uh, thinking about what happened to that discussion um, between event-driven programming and thread-based programming? There was a discussion in 95, Osterhout said that, you know, uh, threads are, the, are a bad idea, event-driven is, uh, you know, um, very simple. And then 2003, Eric Brewer published a paper saying that uh, events are a bad idea and threads are, efficient and stuff. So yeah, this, but I like, um, um, it, so the, the thing is event-driven programming may get complicated. If you have too many events, you, um, you lose focus of what was the state, it may become like very spaghetti code, but uh, this makes you code uh, stuff similar to state machines where you, as you can see, you always have a start state, okay? And you can have a state like this, uh, line 11, state start pumping request, where you go from the init uh, start state of init, you jump there. So it's state transitions. And then inside the state, you can have um, uh, events like this. The event may cause you to do an event handling code. and transition your state again. I, I like uh, this because I find this uh, similar to the guarded command like uh, language we use for um, writing distributed uh, algorithms and distributed pr programs. So I think there is a appeal of this. Uh, I think this is an easy way to program. Um, is this just syntactic sugar? I don't know. I think this would uh, improve productivity for distributed systems uh, um, programming. And uh, P is actually used a lot. Um, there is a GitHub page. This is open source language. Uh, inside Microsoft, they have P Sharp framework that's uh, based on this P language. Uh, there is a robotics work, drone programming work uh, at uh, uh, Microsoft using the P Sharp language, but the killer, killer feature of P is not just event-driven programming. The killer feature is it unifies modeling and programming. This is a big deal. Uh, I mean, it uh, gives you executable code. Um, it uh, generates, a, I think it has a C-sharp compiler. It generates a code to C, C++ and .NET frameworks. It's good, but it also lets you write um, specifications with your code. And then it, the, the, the backend the, uh, associated with P, P sharp. And now I think 
Microsoft has a new um, project based on this coyote. That's uh, what uh, this um, um, forked into can provide you testing support, testing support for the specifications that you wrote, okay? One type of testing support is um, randomized, um, um, randomized tests like property testing that some modern languages, programming language libraries uh, provide like sort of fuzzy hitting the st uh, state space, but randomized. The other is uh, symbolic testing, which gives exhaustive coverage of test space by mapping them to what is covered, what is not uh, symbolically. So for example, if uh, A is less than B, um, if you want to test, maybe you test three things, A is less than B, A equals B, A greater than B, instead of you know giving thousands of uh, uh, values to A and B, if that's the thing that matters, okay? So this is symbolic. And I think Coyote even does model checking based on the P code. So it's, it's good. Um, it's, I think it's used uh, a lot in practice. And the GitHub page also says that this is also used in AWS um, exhaustively for um, uh, testing um, complex distributed systems. Okay, so this was an example of a P server, a P language um, um, code. You can have event types, you can have um, message types, you create a machine, and there is also interfaces. You say that interface, and then you say that um, in another file, you say that this, um, this uh, machine implements this interface, as a, uh, like in Go or like in Rust. Uh, and the interfaces, and also if you look at a machine, it just um, out front says that, oh, I send this message or I receive this message, I accept this message. So for example, this one, I receive these messages, I send these messages and so on. Okay. Now, okay, so that's good, but uh, let's come to the current paper. The current paper says that, okay, P is good. Also uh, uh, unifies modeling and uh, coding. But this testing, how do we scale this testing? Especially if it is maybe, uh, you know, how do we improve the coverage for random testing? How do we um, scale this for symbolic testing that looks exhaustively at uh, state space? Because the state space explodes when we consider large programs. Uh, so if we test everything, all the code together for a even, even a small distributed system, it could be um, tens of thousands lines of codes and this is not going to scale. This testing uh, backends are not going to scale. It may take a couple of days and no, it won't work. Okay, so how do we ensure scalability of backend systematic testing? That's the problem considered in this paper. Well, the, the obvious way is to decompose uh, the system level testing problem to component level testing problem. If we can uh, decompose this, instead of testing the entire thing mono uh, monolithically, if we can test at the component level and lift this up to uh, reasoning about system level, that would work. And that's what the paper is about. So the paper doesn't even use the word integration, but I think this paper is basically model-based integration testing of distributed systems. If I were to summarize this uh, shortly, I would say this is, you know, model-based integration testing of distributed systems. Okay, so how does ModP assume this decompositional testing of distributed systems? They use um, the uh, assume guarantee theory. The assume guarantee theory is also known as rely guarantee theory. This is goes back the 90s, 1990s, uh, I mean, uh, I, um, Les Lamport had papers on rely guarantee, composing specifications uh, with assume guarantee, uh, etc. Um, it's very nice theory. Um, the, the idea goes like this. The, um, it um, helps you lift component level testing to whole system level. It goes like this. Um, you start with each component. You specify each component and assume 
specifications, what it assumes from its environment and guarantee specifications. If these assumes are satisfies, satisfied, what it guarantees in return to its environment, okay? That's why it's called assume guarantee thing. You just give the component specification in terms of, I assume these things from my environment and in return, I can provide these things to my environment. Of course, a component's environment is formed by the other components it will be composed with in the system, okay? So if you have the assume guarantee for each component and these um, guarantees of, let's say I'm component A and I will be uh, composed with B and C, the guarantees of B and C combined, if it satisfies my assume specifications, then you can bank on my guarantees, A's guarantees as well. That's what the assume guarantee theorem says. And it says that if uh, each component's um, assume is uh, satisfied by the guarantee of the other components, the uh, resulting guarantee for the compost system is uh, all of the guarantees of all components, right? A's guarantee, B's guarantee, and C's guarantee together. Okay, so thus the AG theorem states that it is possible to take the conjunction of all components, AG specifications, and derive the system AG specification. Beautiful theory uh, by um, also making this in terms of uh, traces, showing um, refinement, uh, etc. Okay, so let's come back to how MODP uses this. Again, um, it uses it like this. Each component first automatically is tested for showing refinement with respect to abstract modules and specifications. We invent something called abstract modules. Why? Because we want to make this compositional testing scalable. Okay, this will come in a second. This will come in a second. First, we show that uh, maybe you call this unit testing. You can call this unit testing. What I gave as the interface for this um, component, uh, this my implementation, my concrete satisfies my abstract uh, machine, okay? Then each component is composed with the abstract versions of the other components and is tested for system level specifications. So I'm not testing the entire system all with all the concretes together because that would be monolithic testing. Instead, I'm testing each component's concrete uh, implementation with the, composing it with the abstract implementation of other components. And then I use the assume guarantee theorem and say that uh, the, um, the composed uh, system satisfies the guarantees of, uh, satisfies the guarantees provided by each component. Okay, so a picture. So this would be monolithic testing. For example, two-phase commit and multiplexus SMR, these could be thousand lines, thousand lines and um, too many things to test because of the state space explosion, okay? Instead, um, abstraction-based decomposition says that, you know, I have a um, abstract version of the two-phase commit. It's a, uh, um, it's a simple client, uh, SMR client uh, interface. That's what this uh, implements, okay? First, I test via unit test. The backend automatically does this. Uh, uh, with uh, the testing, uh, with random testing, it gives random values and checks that uh, all the traces of the concrete is a trace of the abstract. Um, or it can also do this symbolic testing and uh, checks this. Similarly for multiplexus, multiplexus uh, implements the SMR state machine replication abstraction. Cool. Now, instead of, uh, now I'm going to test the concrete of two-phase commit with the abstract of um, um, multiplexus, the SMR abstraction. And I'm going to test that this refines atomicity, this satisfies the atomicity specification. When the concrete of this is composed with an abstract, um, machine, abstract um, uh, interface that provides uh, uh, linearizability, uh, like in uh, multiplexus, the result would be atomicity will be satisfied. Okay, how does this help us? Now I don't need to 
know about how multiplexos works. I'm just uh, doing looking at Cartesian products of something big and something small, okay? And the same thing I do for the other. And then the AG theorem says that, ergo, this needs to be hold, even though I did not have to test uh, explicitly with two concrete components composed, I compose the concrete components with the abstract versions of the others. And since I can show these, ergo, this, um, this works, okay. Um, okay, so where are we at? So this is good because we can have very well checked, almost exhaustively checked integration testing. And what was the cost to the programmer? The programmer had to write the concretes anyway. The programmer writes these abstract specifications for their things, but you can argue that this is good because this was used for unit testing anyways. And this gave the programmer more um, assurance about its implementation. Then we do the, these tests. Okay, the programmer writes these specifications as well. It's low cost to the programmer, right? So for your concrete implementation, you also write an abstract interface and uh, you write specifications that you want to test and the testing framework does the rest. And how good a coverage you get um, with symbolic uh, um, uh, testing, you get very good coverage. It's not excellent coverage, maybe in proof-based methods that we discuss in Armada, et cetera, but those things did not scale because too many states to consider, first of all, and secondly, uh, it requires too much programmer effort because programmer had to give the tips for hints, proof hints for each step and the steps can get really uh, involved. So the premise of this is with a relatively low programmer effort, you got very good um, um, correctness reasoning. Okay, but if you look at uh, testing this versus these tests, this looks like a lot of tests to perform to have this thing. So does this, uh, does this arithmetic check that this is really uh, much faster than doing uh, um, exhaustive testing of these two components? Okay, the paper has a figure called figure 13. It uh, makes a good case for why this is the case. A concrete implementation would have um, a lot of traces that um, um, keeps occurring but for example, this trace keeps occurring almost 9,000 times. It maps to only one trace in the, in the abstract thing, in the abstract thing. So we save a lot of um, um, testing headache uh, because if we were doing random testing, guess, guess where, which traces you would be picking. You would be picking from this most common occurring or maybe C and you would not even maybe get a, much coverage of B and uh, or A, okay? But if you instead consider the abstract versions, this thing would be just one trace and uh, it would be picked. This would be almost smoothened and you would be picking one for each. Uh, um, so that's the thing. So for example, it says that executions in linearizability, the abstract component is on the order of, uh, the traces are on the order of, uh, 10 to the power four, whereas the other is on the order of 10 to the six, because this has a lot of uh, um, internal variables and internal uh, steps that would uh, map to the same abstract state. Okay, and uh, in practice, what does this uh, amount to? Figure 14, this was with the uh, uh, parameterized uh, random search um, uh, backend uh, for testing. Uh, they looked at the monolithic of uh, multiplexos and 2PC and chain replication and 2PC versus their approach of compositional. Monolithical mean that we combine both concrete components. Uh, compositional uh, method means what I described there, okay? So they, there were 20 bugs that I, uh, they identified uh, at the end uh, using the 
their compositional testing. So they picked uh, um, eight bugs at random and uh, they compared the time it took in testing to find it with their approach and with monolithic approach. With mono uh, so there could be 100 times uh, uh, difference in time. For example, uh, in bug two, it was discovered uh, with only 19 schedules explored versus 1900 schedules explored. Uh, for a chain replication bug three, again, 100 times uh, improvement. And some bugs were simply not found with the uh, monolithic testing because um, this was random testing and uh, they fall in these regions and did not even get a chance to be explored well, okay? So those were not found with the monolithic testing at all. Well, how about symbolic uh, execution? If we had symbolic execution, we would find, uh, find them. They do symbolic execution with their approach and it finishes in an hour. And uh, for the monolithic approach, it doesn't finish even after 10 hours, okay? Um, okay. So this theory, um, of testing with the abstract of others uh, and then concluding this is not new. Actually, this had been done for hardware testing in 2005, et cetera, the paper cites them. And the paper says that what we did, uh, what we improve is um, those were for a static environment. This is now for a distributed uh, systems environment where new processes can be created dynamically and um, the topology, the connectivity of processes can also change dynamically. So this is new thing. I think another thing that's new is this is integrated into a, um, sort of mainstream, I, not, not mainstream, but big language with uh, good execution and good backend frames that Microsoft uh, supports and the, the GitHub page also claims that this is used in AWS testing as well. This is something engineers can use for real, real systems. I think that's, uh, that's big. Um, so the, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the discussion in the paper uh, basically talks about um, um, the, the changes they made to make the elegant uh, assume guarantee theory work in the same elegant way for this thing. For me, these are just uh, mostly renaming based things just to make the theory happy. It's good to see that uh, the theory applies, but I think this wasn't anything to, um, this was done for the sake of showing that the theory applies. Uh, for example, um, um, they say that for the theory to apply with this dynamic processes and dynamic computation, communication uh, topology, we, we require well formedness and we wrote a check for well formedness for composition. What does well formedness mean? Well formedness require output disjoint. And we can achieve this by saying that the created interfaces are disjoint. What if I want to use uh, the same interface twice in two components? You can rename an interface and you use the renamed interface. You know, you, here you call it, uh, um, I don't know, SMRA. Here in the second component, you can call SMRB and keep the, keep the theory happy, theorem happy, because this is a trace space uh, uh, theory that they make it apply very elegant, that I agree. And another thing is sand events are disjoint again it could be done the same way. Okay, and uh, what you get in return is this beautiful thing with uh, um, trace space checking. You can say that a trace T belongs to um, composition of P, um, um, two modules P and Q, their composition, this is composition operator. If and only if this trace projected to P's variables, projected on P is a trace of P, and this trace projected to Q is a trace of Q. So this is composition is intersection, the elegant thing that uh, this shows, and the technicalities are basically this use of interfaces, use of um, uh, 
um, checking for valve formulas and the beautiful thing you get in return is this, uh, this um, theorem. A trace T belongs to P compose Q, if and only if this is both way implication. This implies this and this implies this. T projected to P is a trace of P and T projected to Q is a trace of uh, Q. There is a very nice uh, conference presentation for the paper. Uh, do watch it. Uh, it's from Uppsala. It makes things clear. And this is the overall of all, all steps involved. This is the overview of this thing. P models distributed systems as collection of state machines. Check. Um, we, the, um, there is actor model um, uh, extension to P machines. Okay. We now have modules um, and then we have this interface for each uh, machine. And we say that uh, uh, interface, uh, we say that uh, this machine uh, implements this interface. Check, these are easy things. I mean, as far as the program is concerned. Uh, the, I think the involved step is this well-formed uh, module and its operational semantics, which the paper covers mostly in um, section four. And then the beautiful thing you get is composition is language intersection. I mean, and then this is statement of the um, assume guarantee theorem and composi composition and refinement. So let's look at this one, uh, this statement. It says that let's, uh, the P's are the concrete components, Q's are the abstract components. Concrete component one composed with abstract component two. If it refines the uh, uh, abstract component one's uh, um, behavior trace, and abstract component one composed with concrete component two, if this refines the abstract component two trace, then we can say that concrete component one composed with concrete component two refines the traces of abstract component one and abstract component two. This is the, the assume guarantee composition is intersection thing. And that's what we tested actually. So we test a concrete component with the abstract of the other and show refinement. We test the other concrete component with the abstract of its show refinement. And then we can say, these two concrete components compose, refine the abstract components compose. This is another one they, they call substitution. If Q refines R, then um, I can uh, show that um, P composed with Q refines P composed with R because the left sides are P and the right side, um, uh, Q refines R, so I also have P composed with Q refines P composed with R. Okay, so compositional testing of transaction commit, this would be the monolithic test. So there is a um, keyword called test that uh, uh, starts this um, uh, random based testing or symbolic based testing. I think in Microsoft Coyote, they also uh, extended this to model checking kind of thing, I think. Uh, uh, I didn't find too much uh, documents about Coyote. Uh, so it would, the black things are in uh, concrete. Uh, it would look at uh, the composition of two concrete things together. Uh, and for this assert that this satisfies the two PC spec, this would be too hard to check. I mean, this is hearkening back to this thing. So. This is the monolithic check. And now instead of this, we will see how we write this in, in the configuration for uh, to give to the testing backend. We could write it as test the concrete of this with the abstract of the other. Test the concrete of this with the abstract of this one. Um, and then infer the things. So let's see, um, multiplexus. Yeah, this is testing multiplexus uh, asserts its thing um, when composed with the abstract of the other. Uh, and I, this is sort of unit testing me. I assert my specification when composed with the abstract of others. And then the composing gives us 
when the concretes are composed, uh, I still satisfy my uh, high level specification and provide uh, atomicity. Uh, that's what I wanted to get from this distributed system. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And another thing here to note is, once I did this uh, with multiplexos, if instead of multiplexos, I use chain replication for, um, for um, state machine replication, it's an easy change. I don't need to check the uh, test the uh, two PC two PC concrete uh, module anymore because I already tested with the abstract of the um, state machine replication. I just checked the concrete of state machine replication with respect to the abstract. Uh, first, I checked that it satisfies the abstract uh, linearizability. Uh, and then the composition would uh, follow from that. So that's uh, another benefit of uh, modularization, that it's easy to swap a co another concrete module implementation for the same abstracting with uh, less number of tests. We, I don't need to repeat this test again, okay? So that's, that's pretty much everything. So we can do the discussion.